Hi, everybody. Mr. Hayes. Welcome back to Hayes' World of Math. We're wrapping up Unit 6 in the AP Stats sections, and we're talking about what happens if we're wrong. We're following the evidence the way that we should, but what happens if the evidence doesn't quite match up with what's actually going on? It's called Type 1 and Type 2 errors, and we're going to use an incidence of some polluted water to go through and do that. So Wolverine Worldwide, a shoe company in Rockford, and that's actually Rockford, Michigan, improperly disposes of chemicals which leak into the groundwater. The state of Michigan says that if more than 7% of the households exceed the safe limit, then the city needs to use bottled water. A concerned citizen takes a random sample of 100 households and finds 12 of them to have unsafe water. Do the data provide more convincing evidence that Rockford should take or switch to bottled water? The first thing that we have you do is go through and state the hypotheses. Um, first one, null hypothesis, the water is safe. P is equal to 0 0.07. Occasionally, sometimes students will ask, well, what happens if it's less than 0 0.07? And again, remembering we're kind of going for worst case scenario. So if we use a value of 0 0.07, that's going to give us the most extreme option in terms of giving us numbers that um, we'll use. If we use a smaller number, that will change things. So we're going to we're going to say what happens if we go all the way up to that limit. Water is unsafe is our alternative hypothesis, and so we're saying that p is bigger than 0.07, and p is the true proportion of all households in Rockford with unsafe water. And we're using an alpha value of 0.05. Sorry that didn't come out on the notes. I need to take a look and see how that gets switched over to PDFs. By the way, the notes are down below, <clears throat> along with links to the other parts in this unit. So feel free to do that. And if you like what you're seeing, hit subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell your grandmother. Who knows? Maybe she'll like it. So after conducting a significance test, the p-value comes out at 0 0.025. Interpret this value. So, just like we've been doing, assuming the null hypothesis is true, that p is equal to 0 0.07, there is a 0 0.025 probability of getting a p-hat value of 12% or greater purely by chance. So, we definitely are hitting the alpha value. And so... The question then falls, do we reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject it? And because 0 0.025 is less than our alpha value of 5, we reject the null hypothesis. Rockford should switch to bottled water. Now, here's the question, and this is where things are building up into the type, what's called a type 1 error. 2.5% can still happen. Okay, People win the lottery. Okay, um, You know, the... Boston Red Sox won the World Series. You know, the Cubs won the World Series, any of that type of stuff. So this still is not outside of the realm of possibility. So what happens if the decision's wrong? What's going on? So the person who's testing this just happened to grab 12, yeah, 12 households with that had probably polluted water. If you went higher, he or she went higher, maybe they would find all water is fine. So what ends up happening here is Rockford spends a lot of money on bottled water when they didn't need to, because this is saying, hey, it's unsafe, but in reality, it was safe. And that, as I said, is called a type 1 error. Okay, and what ends up happening there is the null hypothesis is true, but we end up rejecting that null hypothesis. Now, if the water is safe, what's the probability this error will occur? Well, this is something that we set. What do we set? Our limit here is 5%. We said anything under 5%, we're going to take as evidence saying that what we're seeing is wrong. And so that's actually, it's your alpha value, okay? The probability of getting a type 1 error is equal to alpha. So you get to set how how close do you want to get? So a 10% alpha value, you're giving a pretty wide latitude there. 5% is generally kind of one of those things that happens, but that's a 1 out of 20. That's fairly rare. And as I think I've said before in this, a lot of times with medical stuff, they go down to 1% or less because they need to make sure that it happens every single day. What they're seeing is actually true. Okay? And that's one of those things, too, where kind of seeing where the numbers come back, you can kind of get a sense of where things are going to fall to. Okay? Now, let's say the p-value is actually 0.217, so a bit over 20%. So 
So do we reject, sorry, that should be lowercase, or subscript. Do we reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis? Do we keep the bottle, keep the current water, or do we go to bottle water? Okay, so if it's 217, because 0.217 is bigger than our alpha value of 5%, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. According to what we're seeing here, everything's fine. Just one of those things looks bad, but the data says it's, we're okay. Rockford should keep the current water. Now, what happens here if we're having a problem? What happens again if we just happen to have hit 20, you know, a, a certain number that works? So again, here, what happens if this decision's wrong? People drink the water, which is unsafe, because again, remember, we're saying, what happens if this decision is wrong? So we're saying we fail to reject the null hypothesis, so that means that we're we're working under the assumption that the water is safe, but it really isn't then. So people are drinking unsafe water, and people could be getting sick or even die. This is called a type 2 error. So that means that your alternative hypothesis is true, and we fail to reject our null hypothesis. Okay. So take a second. Which one of those is probably more serious? I'll be, go ahead and hit pause. I'll wait. Probably having people die <laughs> would be the one that's a little bit more serious. Or at least not even die, but let's say even have health problems. The long-term cost of those health problems could be a lot more than the cost of what the water is. And so in a case like this, having a decently high alpha value makes sense. Okay, and that might also be something else where even here, even at 20%, you know, you might want to say, well, I don't know. Okay, and so that's one of those things where you need to consider the type 1 and type 2 errors about what happens if we're wrong. And what's, a, it's typically cost, called a cost-benefit analysis of which way, if we're going to be wrong, which way would we rather be? I'm going to guess City might say, I'd much rather have bottled water here than risk having to pay medical bills and lawsuits from here. So we will go ahead and say, okay, bottled water, that's the way to go. Some people may make, might make a different decision. And again, depending upon the situation, it's going to depend upon what, I mean, that, that will change. But anyway, we're going to talk more specifically about this on the other side, on the other video, where we're going to get into the specifics of it. So feel free to join me over there. We'll talk to you soon.